Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, and happy Easter to you. It is so good to have you join us, whether you're joining us online uh, or here uh, at St. Michael's this morning, uh, as we celebrate uh, resurrection, as we celebrate the news uh, that Jesus is alive, that he has risen. Uh, if you don't know me, uh, I'm uh, David Brown, the vicar here, and uh, it's really good to uh, welcome you, particularly if it's your first time uh, at St. Michael's. Uh, we're all in together through this morning, so uh, all ages all the way through, and uh, uh, later on we'll be uh, celebrating communion, and you're uh, welcome to uh, receive and play your part in it all. Everything you need uh, will be uh, on the screen. Uh, just one uh, notice, notice, which is, uh, as it's the Easter weekend, there's no uh, 7 p.m. prayer meeting this evening. Uh, so that starts again uh, next week. So no 7 p.m. prayer meeting, either online or here in the building today, uh, but we'll be back on uh, next Sunday. And apart from that, notice-wise, uh, I have some bands of marriage to read. So I published the bands of marriage between Jonathan Eric Larson. Uh, and Sarah Rogendorf, both single and of this parish. Uh, this is for the first time of asking, so if any of you know a reason in law why they may not marry, then you must declare it. There's always that kind of, sort of moment of, of silence, uh, but I think we're all good. Uh, Luke's going to lead us on from this point uh, through our uh, morning, uh, but let's just pause and uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are with us in times of joy. We pray your hand on those preparing for marriage, and in fact the bands that we've read over these uh, past few weeks for different couples. And we know, Lord, that you are alongside us when times are tough. And we pray whatever our need this morning, that we would experience you and your risen presence are with us, that you would meet us at our point of need. And that we would be filled with the hope that the news of Easter brings to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Before we start our service today, what I'd like you to do is to turn to someone next to you. If you know them, that's okay. If you don't know them, then you can get to know them. And I'd like you to say to them this morning... How many Easter eggs are you getting or you're hoping to get? And is that more or less than last year? Okay, you've got 10 seconds to say it. How many are you getting and is that more got or less than last year? Got them, eaten Great. Great. If we can come back together then. It's so easy on an Easter Sunday to get so distracted with all of the exciting things that happen on Easter, whether it's the, the chocolate, whether it's the Easter egg hunt, um, whether it's going to see your family or your family coming to see you as well. And they're all really good things and really great things to actually be able to do today in order to celebrate today. But we are gathered here today to celebrate something that's much better than chocolate, much greater than your family coming to visit. And that is that we're celebrating that Jesus came, he died, and today we are remembering that he rose again for each and every one of us. So if you're able to and willing to, shall we stand together? Because it's really easy today to have our eyes fixed on all the things that we're going to get up to for the rest of the day. Um, but we have a mission prayer, and that's a prayer that as a church we've written, that is something which is our vision, our things that we choose to look towards and aim towards as a church. And it's something we like to start our services with as a way of just framing where our hearts, where our minds are at as we start our service this morning. So if you're able to, shall we say these words together? God of mission. Who alone brings growth to your church. Send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and the power to our witness. Help our church to grow in spiritual commitment to you, in numbers and in service to our local community. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
And we also have our very special Easter acclamations as well this morning. Ruth, we've been looking for you, checking you're here. This is Ruth's potential favourite part of the whole year. So we're going to say, um, if you can say the parts in bold, that would be great. So, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Shall we do that last line again? Just in the joy. And we can really shout it out because this is a celebration this morning. We are celebrating that Jesus Christ is risen and that's what we're here to do. So, Alleluia. Christ is risen. And just as we prepare ourselves for worship this morning, our collect for our Easter Sunday. And it says this, God of glory, by the raising of your son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way of life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to stand and worship together now. There is some activities on the sides for the kids if they'd like to go and do some of those. Um, But if you're able to, shall we continue to stand? And Steve and Liz and the band will lead us in worship now.
Father God, we thank you that you are worthy of it all. We thank you that there's nothing that we can do that you haven't already thought of. There's no creative thing that we can do that you've not already done. And there's nowhere we can go that you are not already there. From you are all things and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. So Holy Spirit, we invite you here to come and move amongst us. As we continue with our service now, we ask you to take control and to, to lead us to be with David as he brings the talk this morning. Father, we pray that you soften our hearts ready to receive all that you want to bring us this morning. You are worthy of it all. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll uh,
we'll let these guys uh, find a, a chair before we get started. Uh, as they do, uh, we're going to have our reading in a minute. Uh, I've got a question uh, for you all. How many of you, have you ever done an escape room? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a few nods, some of, you, some of you have. It's definitely kind of on trend, isn't it? It's a kind of team building activity uh, or a party activity. Uh, solving puzzles to get the key uh, that lets you out and make your escape. Okay, so some of you have done it. How many of you actually got out? <laughs> Not so many. Not so many. Well, in Easter, we have the ultimate escape room, the tomb. One that's coming to us all, but it's one that none of us can solve. And nobody could solve. But Jesus has. And this morning, we're going to have an escape room of our own. Woo! <laughs> uh, we're going to do some puzzles, and it's going to, it might be helpful to have the passage open uh, to help us with that. And uh, hopefully in doing that, uh, we're going to understand what happened, why it happened, and what it means. Uh, so Kate's going to come and read to, uh, to us from uh, John uh, 20, I think. And then uh, Mim's going to come and explain how it's all going to work. The Empty Tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still do, did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. <coughs> then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. So to begin with, I'm going to need some participants. So does anyone want to come to the stage? I need lots but I will need some parent helpers to come with them. So does any children want to come up? Thanks, Dan. <laughs> They're quite enjoying their colouring at the moment. So that's... Oh, got another one. We need to solve our escape yeah. room. To get out, this we need the, the help. We're all in it together, but we need a yeah, crack team. Yeah, it's a team, team. activity. <laughs> OK, right. So we're going to be needing to use the Bible passage and our big brains to be able to solve these clues 
to find the way out of the tomb. So once I've read a clue, you need to work out who we're looking for or what we're looking for. After you've solved that, you need to go as a team and find this thing. So I'm going to read clue number one. Very tense, isn't it? <laughs> so clue number one is the first one to the tomb has what they need to find the room through the morning gloom. Wow. Mm. So any ideas? What do we think? Who was the first to the tomb? <laughs> Have we made it like... <laughs> too difficult? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah? Yeah. Well done. Yes. So Mary was the first to the tomb. And... What would you need to see through the morning gloom? A torch. A torch. So mm. we're looking for a torch and we're looking for someone, maybe a woman, Who like Mary. Do you want to go and retrieve, go see and if you can go on the hunt and see if you can find them? Yeah, well done. We have retrieved clue number, clue two. number two. All right. Let's have a look at clue number two. In just a moment. Mim, before we do that. Yes. It's interesting, isn't it, that the first witness uh, was Mary. Mark's account uh, tells us about two other women went with her first thing. Uh, all of them had witnessed Jesus' death. So they knew... Uh, that he was dead, and they were going to anoint the body. Now, do you remember when there was a pretty nasty smell in here a few weeks ago? Yes. Yeah, I'd, not guilty, I'd showered. Um, but uh, it was caused by a teeny tiny mouse that uh, wasn't very well. Uh, just imagine what a body might be like. So they'd gone expecting Jesus to be dead with what they needed to kind of uh, wrap his body and embalm it. But as a sign that the world is being turned upside down and was, uh, you know, that was beginning. It's interesting, isn't it, that God chose as the very first witnesses uh, those who wouldn't be considered reliable witnesses in the day, uh, the women, uh, to witness that Jesus was alive. And Jesus' kingdom turns things upside down and still is. Now, let's go to our next clue. And uh, let's see what we've got in here. Now, Dan, do you want to go and read that from the lectern so we can hear you? It'll be on the screen. And then if others want to come and help us, you're welcome to come and join in. This was removed from the entrance, our passage said. Can you find the version... Near, can you find our version near where we break bread? Mm. So what was removed? Ooh, that's that's a the good first idea, thing. Yeah. Stone's a good idea. We got that? The stone. Yeah, the stone was removed from the entrance. Now, where do we break bread? What does that mean? Anyone to guess? Well, Gabby's, Gabby's got an idea. Gabby? You get a clue to allow. We're, all, we're solving this together. It's a team effort. You've been coming here all these years and you've no idea. Okay, so we've got. Ah, do you want to have a look round at the sort of the communion table and see what we can find? This is where we might need some parent help. Yeah. There we go. That's it. Keep going. <laughs> Pressure test. Oh, I think we've got something. <laughs> How are we doing, everyone? Oh, just in time. And you've got the clue. Shall we bring our stone? We're quite proud of this. You, you didn't make it. I made it. I'm proud of you. Oh, thanks. And here's our stone being rolled. 
It's heavier than it looks. <laughs> That's why we needed some helpers. There we go. Where should we pop that? Should we pop well, that going to fit here? Let's hope he doesn't topple the lectern. There. Brilliant. We'll have a look at our clue in a second. Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, good job. Thanks. <laughs> in fairness, our artistic director and, uh, and Mim uh, did that. I just kind of looked and said, oh, well done. <laughs> it's a bit awkward, wasn't it? A bit bulky and heavy. The, the actual stone would have been somewhere between a ton and two tons. You know, the weight of a, of a, of a reasonable car, a decent sized car. You, know, you don't move these things by accident. Uh, and Matthew's account tells us actually it was an earthquake uh, that rolled uh, the stone. Uh, so if the women coming to embalm the body tells us that we know Jesus had died, then the stone rolling tells us that we know the tomb was empty because when people looked in, there was no one there. And actually, this is a fact that whether people believe in the, the, the you know, Easter message or not, everyone agrees on. You've got to have an explanation for it. Uh, you know, but this thought, all that would have been needed to shut the uh, kind of Easter story down would have been to produce the body, and no one could. Should we have our next clue? Our next clue. Oh, okay. I shall. Min, why don't you, the as, next clue. as escape room master. Who's never escaped successfully, but that's not the point. <laughs> clue number three. The one who won the race to the tomb holds the next clue for our room. So who, the race to the tomb, who was racing? What happened? Has anyone got the passage open? There's Do you remember? Yeah. There two disciples that raced Peter, out. Peter and the other one. Yeah. There were. Peter. Brilliant. So two. So there was Peter and who else? John. Uh, he describes himself as the disciple who uh, Jesus loved. So we need to. Who who looks like they're? I'll be re ready for a race. That's what we've got. A <laughs> oh, good bit of physical comedy going on. Can we can we go and retrieve our racer? It's ready for a race. <laughs> Brilliant. And thank you to Hamish, who, who actually is probably the quickest of anyone here. Uh, I, I, I see Hamish at Park Run. I'm kind of uh, still running up the hill, uh, and he's coming back down, having already kind of looped round. So uh, good stuff. All right, so should we read our next clue? But before we read our next ah, clue. Ah, before we need our next clue. So in this passage, as soon as Peter and John hear about Jesus' empty tomb, they immediately start running to try and find out like, what's going on. Their physical running not only represents their desperation to find out what's happening, but also their spiritual searching. They were trying to understand and comprehend why all of this was happening and what it all meant. They just watched their teacher, whom they had been following for the past three years, be brutally murdered by crucifixion, and then suddenly his body's gone missing. They were probably worried that the body had been stolen, so they might be feeling angry, confused, or heartbroken. However, when they get to the tomb, they begin to see that something very different is happening. Their reaction shows you've got to have an explanation for what is going on. We all need to make our choice about why the tomb was empty. John's reaction to the scene in front of him was that he believed. He believed that Jesus had been raised from the dead, even if he did not completely understand the why and what all of this meant. So, we're going to read our next clue. Do you want to read it? Look for what was left behind, wrapped within our clue you'll find. So what was left behind? What was in the tomb? Yeah. Cloths. The grave clothes. Fantastic. Now, uh, don't worry, you don't have to go out into the churchyard. We've not, we've not uh, kind of left them out by the gravestones there. But there are some memorial stones in the church. Does anyone know where they are? Oh, one there. Yeah? Anywhere else? Anywhere else? 
Da, da, da. So why don't you go and have a look around and see if you can find something that looks a bit like grave clothes, where the memorial stones might be. What have we got? What do we think? Yeah. Let's see if we've got a clue wrapped up within them. Wow. So we've got our next clue. Okay. These are not technically grave clothes, but I thought they were a pretty good job. Not as good as the stone. All right. Okay. Before Mem. we open our next clue. So, the grave clothes being folded and put to the side tells us two things. One, Jesus' body was not stolen. In fact, it makes no logical sense to say that it was. Grave robbers, when they go and steal from a tomb, would never steal the body because the body has no value. They would steal the jewels, the ointments and maybe the clothes. But the fact that the body has gone, but the grave clothes remain, shows how the, this was no robber's doing. As a teenager, I am rather disappointed that Jesus likes to put his clothes away and tidy his room, but whatever. Although the scene does show, although what the scene does show is a job that is finished. The fact that the grave clothes have been removed and folded to one side tells us that Jesus is no longer dead he does not wear grave clothes because he is not a part of that. He is risen and he is alive. So, should we read our next clue? Go on, Dan, you can read it. Who is waiting in the tomb? Our I uh, nearly curate must wear their costumes. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Ah. Did I say that right? Yeah. So, so who was in the tomb and who's our nearly curate? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. So who was in the who, who was in the tomb? <coughs> An angel. Yeah. And who's our nearly curate? <laughs> <laughs> it's all good practice, Luke. There. Let's. Uh... David looked very happy to see me this morning. <laughs> after after many years, Luke. Right, I'll have to turn around, face. We'll pop it over. Uh, arms through. You could take the rest of the service with that one, actually. There. Do you think he looks angelic? <laughs> if the live stream wants to go off at this point, I'm fine with that. Now, there's an interesting thing that... For me, going on with the angel, what normally happens in the Bible when someone meet, meets an angel? They're terrified. They're stunned. They're like they're on their faces. And Mary's like, "Yeah, where's Jesus?" I mean, she's so fixated on on what's happened to Jesus and where he is and what's going on here that the angel's just like, "Yeah, whatever." Angel, some angel. I, I know. I need to know what, where Jesus is. I, and I think that's uh, uh, amazing. There's kind of no panic. Oh, that we had hearts for God like that. Uh, because the heart that seeks, like Mary does, and is focused on seeking for God, is the heart that finds. Uh, let's be those who seek. And, and look what happens to Mary. She seeks, and what does she find? She finds the God who calls her by name. Mary, he says. And he calls us by name too. Okay, Luke, uh, there should be a clue somewhere close by. Why don't you... Uh, come and read it to us. And this will be our last part of our escape room, I think. Yeah. To clue six, the key to our escape is the word that you can find upon the bird. 
So what do we think? The key to escape is in the word that you can find upon the bird. Mm. What do we think might be going on there? Ooh. Can we solve it together? Have a look. Go have a look. Oh, I think they're onto it. We have the key. Should we give them a round of applause? We have solved our Easter escape room. Well done. Why don't you go and take a seat? Oh, no, I think you should keep it on, actually. The word, the, the, the word of God, the Bible, uh, the bird, our kind of eagle uh, stand. Uh, great job. Well, you might say it's, it's kind of a fun kind of analogy, uh, but uh, a key is not going to get you out of a, a two sort of uh, ton sealed grave, is it? Uh, there's no kind of interment or, or tomb uh, that this is going to work on. But Jesus said this, Revelation 1 verse 18, I'm the living one, I was dead, and now look, I'm alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. The Bible tells us that death entered the world because of our rejection of God, the life giver. We kind of turned away. We did our own thing. And the consequences of that continue to kind of play out. We see it all around us. We see it uh, within us. It's kind of woven into the trouble uh, that we experience uh, and see day by day. It's woven into the stories that we tell, uh, actually. Uh, This week, uh, Netflix launched their kind of latest big thing. Uh, called The Three-Body Problem. Uh, It's a sci-fi thriller. Uh, It tells the story of an impending alien kind of invasion. Uh, I love the books. I don't know if any of you have come across it before. Uh, Really interesting. But the starting point of the story is this. An individual uh, who's experienced kind of everything, the awfulness of the world at its worst, uh, and understands and sees the brokenness of humanity, sends a message out into space. And the message is this, come, we cannot save ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. Absolutely the right diagnosis, wrong solution. Right diagnosis, wrong solution, because there is a saviour. Death could not hold him because he did not sin. And now he holds the keys of death himself And that means this. It means he has the authority and the power to release from death anyone who comes to him. And that is what we celebrate this Easter. The ultimate escape room holds the key, which is the gift of salvation. God's free gift to us. It's yours And the one who broke uh, the chains of death and rose from the dead and leaves the tomb in triumph offers it to you. You just have to receive it. That's the good news of Easter. Look, I was dead and now I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys, says Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I give all the credit to my wife for the story I'm about to share, which was um, last night. We were reading a story at uh, bedtime for our two kids, and um, it was the Easter story, and um, it finished with like this kind of really um, beautiful way of explaining how um, Jesus rose from the dead, 
and how he can live in our hearts if we want him to. And my three-year-old said, Noah, does Jesus live in your heart? And Noah was like, yeah. And then he, she was like, Daddy, does he live in your heart? I was like, yep. He's like, Mummy, does he live in your heart? She was like, yeah. She goes, can he live in my heart? And we went, yeah, if you'd like him to. And we said a very simple prayer last night. She's three, and when we explained to her afterwards, what does she think it means? What, what does she think went on? She goes, I don't really know, but you all had Jesus in your heart, and I want him in mine too. And we had this moment as a family where we could pray for our little three-year-old as she invited Jesus into her heart, and we pray that that continues throughout the rest of her life, but there was something so kind of pure and simple about, actually, you've got something, and I want that something. I see that something, and I'd like it. And David's just finished his talk now that him and Min brought by talking about the key. And today we have the invitation for every single person in this room. Whether you've been a Christian for 50 years, whether you wouldn't necessarily describe yourself as a Christian. The invitation today is to say, Jesus, do you want to live in my heart? Do you want to invite him into your heart and say, I'm here for you. I acknowledge that you died. I acknowledge that you rose again. And I want you to live in my heart with me. So what I'd like us to do, if it's okay, is if you're willing and able to, shall we just stand together? I'm going to ask Steve just to start playing. We're going to sing a song in a moment. But there's these great books that J. John has written, and we've got a few of them uh, for anybody who'd like to take one away with them um, at the end of the service. But there's this, just this great prayer that I think would be a really good prayer for those of us who want to maybe renew our faith this morning, Maybe this morning we want to put a kind of a stamp and say, do you know what, this year maybe hasn't been the best year or this week hasn't been the best week or this day hasn't been the best. I'm going to reaffirm my faith. Maybe this morning you say, I've never affirmed my faith. And based on the words that we've sung and the things that we've heard, you want to affirm it today. All I'm going to do is I'm going to read the prayer and leave a pause. And if you're able to, maybe just in our hearts, we won't do it out loud, we'll do it just to ourselves if you just repeat the prayer with me and then at the end we're going to say amen and if that's the first time you've done it we're going to celebrate and if it's the hundredth time you've done it we're going to celebrate too because this is a day when we acknowledge all that Jesus has done and we can choose to fix our eyes on him so in our hearts repeat after me thank you God for loving me before I ever loved you Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. Thank you that I can get connected to you now because you are alive today. I admit that I've lived my life without you and have messed up. I ask for your total forgiveness and I commit myself to you. Help me to submit to you from now on. And I receive you into my life and ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Amen. And the amazing thing is, the end of that prayer says, I ask you to fill me with, me with your Holy Spirit. And the thing is, when we ask God, he comes. And if that's something you've asked God, his spirit can live in you and will live in you. And that means the creator of heaven and of earth, the person who sent his son to die on the cross and rise again for us, his spirit can live inside each and every one of us. So as the communion of saints, which basically means the gathering of all the believers together, there's a declaration in the words of the creed, which is something we say, that when you're a believer of Jesus, you say, this is what we believe. And the words of that's going to come on the screen. And if this is a prayer that you've said, 
You can say it with all gusto and joy this morning because we can say it together because this is what we believe together. So with the words on the screen, shall we say this now? I believe in God. Amen. And we can also finally have the words of the peace on the screen as well. So as we prepare ourselves for breaking bread together, we're going to say the words of the peace. So the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. So let us offer one another a sign of his peace.
as we come to uh, break bread this morning. I kind of feel in the prayer that Luke led us through, we've kind of made our confession this morning and uh, sort of recommitted ourselves to following Jesus. Uh, But maybe it's just good to take a couple of moments of quiet uh, to continue to pray, pray for uh, God's resurrection uh, victory uh, to be seen and to move uh, more and more in our world. So I'm just going to give us a couple of themes and then in your hearts you may want to just pray uh, for those things and then we'll gather everything together as we break bread. So Lord, we pray for the coming of the kingdom of heaven, of the life of heaven, which broke in when Jesus rose from the dead into our world. And we pray it in the places of conflict. That the new and coming age of peace would break in. We bring Gaza, Ukraine, and uh, Cameroon. We know the war there isn't in the news, but we hear of it through uh, Manka, who's part of the family here. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Pray for our nation and our government. Pray for wisdom that comes from above to make policy that brings about justice. And if there's an area of concern on your heart, maybe just bring that to to the Lord in the quiet. And again, we pray your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as in heaven. We pray for our communities, the places we live, the places we go, we work, we study. And again we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. We pray for those who are on our hearts. Maybe those who are sick, struggling. Maybe our five who we long to see come to faith in Jesus. And again we pray, risen Jesus, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. And we bring our prayers and our praises, everything that we've uh, brought with us this morning. We leave at the foot of the cross the things that need leaving there. And we ask as we come to this communion table, we would uh, take forward the new life that you call us into. And so we declare together, the Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise for the gospel that we have received. Christ died for our sins. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Death comes through Adam and sin reigns for a time. New life without end comes through Christ and he reigns forever. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Death is swallowed up in victory. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We who share his risen life praise you forever with the angels. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 
God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your son. He gave his life for us on the cross and he shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit then that these gifts of bread and wine may be to us Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, And shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, and his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit to change us more and more to be like our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and the whole of creation is brought together and gathered in your loving arms. And now with all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit, today and forever. Amen. And we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. So as we come to receive this morning, if you would uh, prefer just to uh, receive a blessing, uh, you're welcome to come to the communion rail. Just to helps us if you keep your hands to your side. We kind of know that that's uh, an invitation to pray for you. Uh, but you are welcome to come and share at the Lord's table. And uh, we have uh, little Easter eggs uh, for those who are younger. Uh, so everyone come and receive. That's the Lord's invitation. Come and be blessed. May his blessing be poured out on each of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus' body broken for you. Jesus' body broken for you.
We're going to begin to draw our service to a close now. There is space on the side here um, where our prayer ministry team are going to be. Um, if anything's come up during the service, good, bad, or anywhere in between, and you just want someone just to be with you, to pray with you, um, or just as someone to sit with and just be still with, uh, the team are here and they'd love to do that. Um, so whatever it is, whatever place you're in this morning, they're really um, welcome to come and meet with you and to pray with you if you'd like that. Uh, but shall we stand together and we're going to sing our final song, which is Oh Praise the Name.
so good to be uh, together to celebrate uh, Jesus' resurrection this morning. Uh, to say that if uh, you, as Luke led in that prayer, uh, felt maybe that was kind of the first time or a, a, a significant moment of praying it again for you this morning, then we have got some Easter booklets at the back and Luke uh, will be on hand to share those with you. Uh, have a great uh, bank holiday weekend and if you're off school the rest of the holidays uh, it's been uh, really good to be together let's close with a, a prayer of blessing Jesus says I'm the living one I was dead and now look I'm alive forever and ever and I hold the keys of death and Hades so may the blessing of God Almighty Father Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. If you'd welcome prayer for any reason, uh, our prayer team are available over on your right, my left. And uh, I believe there are a couple of Easter eggs left. Uh, if anyone uh, wants to sort of uh, uh, grab one or two as they head to refreshments. Have a great week. God bless. <laughs>